Hello crafters, this is Yenis Makula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Recently I shared a video with a look at my new collection with spellbinders called Anemone Blues. I'm so glad and so thrilled to hear your feedback. You guys are loving it and your kind words and encouraging comments make my heart happy. You guys are the best. You inspire me to do more. Now today I thought I would share a card making process with you and show you how I use some of the Anemone Bloom products. Now let's rewind a little bit and let's do a little bit of explaining so that you all know what I'm talking about. As you know, or maybe you don't know, I work for Spellbinders and part of my duties is finding guest designers for the Spellbinders blog to help promote Spellbinders collections. I reached out to Joan Bardee a while back and I asked her if she'd be interested in creating with my new collection and luckily Joan said yes. I admire everything Joan makes and I find her cards to be very, very inspiring. When I saw the projects she made using my anemone blooms, my jaw dropped to the floor. The, her cards were absolutely amazing and so, so full of color and life, I felt immediately inspired. So the cards I have for you today are very much inspired by Joan and her cards using my collection. You can see Joan's cards on the Spellbinders blog and probably on her Instagram account and I have links to both places below. So here I have several sheets of colored cardstock. I'll use these to color my anemones. So I'll be cutting the petals from several shades of pink. Here I have the peony from Hero Arts. This is the lightest pink. Next one is Pink Sand from Spellbinders. It is very similar in color to Cotton Candy cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. Next one is Dahlia from Spellbinders. And the last one is Wild Berry, also from Spellbinders. So these will be used for the petals, meaning to add color to my anemones. Next, I have a sheet of white cardstock, and this is Simon Says Stamp Glossy Cardstock. It is particularly good for foiling, but I also love it for die cutting because it is very nice and bright white, and it has that beautiful glossy finish to it as well. You know, it basically shines. It is not the best paper if you plan to add any sort of coloring to it, but it is beautiful when kept white. So this cardstock will be used for the outlines for my anemones. And that's where the inspiration from Joan comes in. Joan used colored cardstock for the flower petals, and then she used white cardstock for the flower outlines. All of my previous cards, I used gold cardstock, you know, gold mirror cardstock. It looks amazing, but you get a very different style with gold. While white gives you that beautiful simplicity. And lastly, I have several sheets of vellum. This is Spellbinders vellum, and I'll use it for the shadow piece for my anemones. So let's go ahead and do some die cutting as there is a trick to getting these cut just right. I have my new and improved Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine from Spellbinders. It is exactly the same as the previous machine, but it comes with a new universal plates system, which is required for the new 3D embossing folders from Spellbinders. Now I'm not using the folders for these cards or in this video, I'm keeping the backgrounds very clean and minimalistic, but I am using the new machine. So I'm first going to die cut the white outlines from that Simon Says Stamp glossy cardstock. I do need to make sure that these are perfectly cut and that the petals fall out easily and so that the petals separate easily from the outline. Because the anemone is a rather detailed dye, it needs some extra love. So you need to send it through the machine two or even three times, rotating the dye and the paper every time you send it through so that it hits different pressure points. So see, I cut it once, I rotated the paper and the dye, and now I'm cutting it again. Now what this does is this gives me a much better cut. This forces all of the pieces to separate much easier. 
And I just need the outline piece here. I don't need any of the petals. So that's why I am sending it through the machine the second time to make sure I have that perfect cut. And if you have an older machine, a machine that is well loved and well used, you might even need to send it through a third time to have that perfect cut. Next, to die cut the colored cardstock, and this time we will need the petals as this is what we are going to use to color our anemones and we don't want the petals to fall out. We want everything to stay together nicely. So this time I'm just sending the die and the paper through the machine once. And this is enough to cut the shape out, to cut the petals as well, but not so that everything comes apart if you know what I mean. All of the elements are cut, but they are staying together. I don't have the petals separating from the outline. If I apply a little bit of force, you know, if I use my fingers to separate the pieces, they will separate, but they are not separating on their own. Now, this, of course, depends on the cardstock, on the thickness of the cardstock that you use. If you use a thinner cardstock, if you add a shim uh, to your plates when you die cut, it will cut it all. All of the pieces will come apart. And there are instances when you do need that as for that outline. But here for this card, I need things to stay together so that I'm not paper piecing these flower petals, you know, petal by petal, because, well, who has time to do that? Now, if you die cut and you find that your die cut is coming apart and petals are separating, you can add a sheet of masking paper to the back of your cardstock. This will increase the weight of your cardstock and will help all of these pieces to get to stay together and connected. Or you can just use thicker cardstock if you have it. Spellbinders, Simon Says Stamp, Hero Arts, these cardstocks are pretty thick. Next, I die cut the shadow pieces from vellum, and that is super easy to cut as vellum is pretty thin and it cuts like butter. Now I need to clean my white die cuts and remove all of the petal pieces as I will not be needing them for these cards. Now, if you want, you can use press and seal and try to save the petals for another project. This would be the smart economical thing to do but it was just easier for me to separate the pieces and just keep the outline die. So here I have my four colored die cuts and I'm going to cut the flowers apart so that each flower in my anemone cluster is a different flower color. You know, each, each flower is different. This is again inspired by Joan as she used three shades of pink in one cluster and it looked so clean and so simple and well, it was just perfect, you know? So for this one, I'm just cutting the bud off and separating the rest of the paper. Now this one actually didn't cut that well, so I used scissors to help finish that outside cut. Next, I'm adding glue just to the outline piece of this bud, so not to the petals, but just to the outline, and I'm going to adhere it to my white outline piece, but from the back, like so. So make sure it is aligned and then put something heavy on top and let the glue grab and set. Next, I'm going to cut the second flower part. I don't need the leaves, so I'm cutting these off. I just need the petals and the outline. So that's what I'm cutting out. Not being very careful, as again, I just need the petals and the petals are connected to the outline. So I'm cutting that, that out as well. Next, adding glue just to the outline section. And again, gluing it from the back to the white outline die cut. And again, putting something heavy on top to let the glue grab and dry. We have one last flower from this light pink cardstock. This is the Hero Arts Peony. And I'm doing the same here. I'm cutting the leaves off as I don't need those. I'm cutting right along the outline of the flower and then adding glue just to the outline section of the flower, and again, gluing it from the back of the white die cut. Now think of this as coloring using paper. I did a video on coloring with paper a while back, and the idea is very simple, you know, use colored cardstock instead of using a coloring medium. So we have four anemone die cuts, and three of them have that first light pink flower added. We just need to repeat the process with the other colored cardstock die cuts to finish coloring our clusters. 
Now, if you see some petals separating as you work on your flowers, you can add a piece of low-tech tape from the back to help the petals stay in place. Now, because this die cut has a shadow die and we cut our shadow from vellum, vellum is what will hold all of the pieces together in the end. We will adhere the finished die cut to the vellum shadow piece and vellum will hold the outline and it will hold all of the petals in place. So if the petals are separating while you are still working on your card and if the petals are falling off, use some tape to temporarily tape them in place from the back. I use the Spellbinders Best Ever craft tape. Now, I was inspired by Joan's card where she used pinks, but this same design and technique can be repeated in many other colors. Because remember, anemones come in all sorts of color. You can even make them black. So here I finished adding the colored petals to my outlines, and I'm going to go ahead and add a dab of glue onto each petal and onto the outline and adhere it onto the vellum shadow piece. Put something heavy on top of it and let it dry. Now here I have another anemone die cut put together using the gold mirror cardstock and the white cardstock for the petals, which I colored using alcohol markers. Here I use the Olo markers. You can see the different looks and the different styles that that gives you. You know, you're using the same product, but the look and style is very, very different. I also die cut flower centers from black cardstock and here I'm simply inlaying them into the flowers, into the centers using glue. Okay, now that we have the clusters made, we can start working on the cards. I love to have multiple clusters on my cards. I love full floral card backgrounds. So I decided to use two clusters on a card as for me, this is the bare minimum that you need to create the illusion of a full floral background. So I have a panel of yellow cardstock. This is Spellbinder's Saffron and also a panel of peach cardstock. And this is Spellbinder's Barely Peach. I'm going to foil a sentiment on both of these panels using the inside card sentiments from my Anemone Blooms collection. Now, there are some snarky sentiments in this set, but also some sentiments that are very sweet. And um, for these cards, I'm going with the sweet sentiments. I will use the opaque white foil for the yellow panel. I love this foil. I just recently discovered it and it is amazing. You'll see. And then for the peach panel, I'm going to use the new pastel pink foil from Spellbinders. I just received it in a box a few days ago. I haven't had the chance to test it, so I have no idea how it foils, but I'm hoping it will foil well. Now, the reason I'm going with this color is because it matches the pink that I have on my flowers. It's not a 100% match, of course, but, you know, close enough. I don't want to use the white uh, foil on the peach panel as I'm not sure it would be prominent enough on that color cardstock. And I do want the sentiment to show up nicely on the card. I do not want it lost. Now I cut a piece of white foil and I'm using low tech tape, the best ever craft tape from Spellbinders for my hinge method to tape the glimmer plate in place. Next, I'm adding my foil and I'm securing everything with another piece of tape before I add it to my Glimmer Hot Foil system. Now, with these sentiments, sometimes you need a shim and sometimes you don't. Typically, you don't. I typically almost always need a cardstock shim, actually two shims, when I am foiling with my Glimmer, but not when I'm foiling sentiments. A rule of thumb for sentiments such as these with a small font you do not need a shim. If you add an extra shim, you will get overfoiling. This happens every single time and it actually doesn't even matter what paper you use. Notice how I positioned the plate and the paper on the glimmer. It is sideways. This way, the glimmer plate will get a lot of nice even pressure and will foil much better than if you place it um, you know, horizontally on your glimmer. This is the same logic as when cutting with detailed dies. The placement matters. Okay, so next I'm opening the pink foil and I was not expecting this. It looks very translucent, you know, very see-through. 
And I almost didn't use it here because I just didn't think it would give me the color that I was going for. But it did. And it worked well. Now, this Barely Peach cardstock, it has some texture to it and it is notoriously difficult to foil on. I should have remembered that because I have used this cardstock a lot, especially for foiling, but it's been a while since I did any foiling, so I didn't remember. And because I didn't remember, I had to foil this sentiment twice, and you'll see that in a minute. The yellow panel foiled perfectly using the white foil. It looks amazing. It looks better than the white embossing powder, and I now prefer this foil to the white embossing powder. Now, if you haven't tried this foil, do give it a try. You will love it. Now, it is currently sold in a pack of two. There is a roll of black and a roll of white foil. I do not know if the white foil will be available separately at some point. I have no idea. It might, but I'm not sure. So if you like the white foil, go ahead and order it. You will not regret getting this color, I promise you. Now, as for the black, it is a new black. It is not the same black as one that is available separately. I have not tried the black color, so I cannot comment on it yet, but I will. Next, I foiled the pink foil on the Barely Peach cardstock. And good thing I used my hinge method because you can see it did not foil well. So I cut another piece of this same pink foil. I placed it on the paper. The plate, the glimmer plate, was still connected using yellow tape. I did not remove it, so I flipped it right back into position and I was able to tape it back in the exact same spot. This hinge method is like using Misty with stamps. If you mess up, you have a very high chance of redoing your sentiment or your image correctly the second time. So I added my panel onto my glimmer and this time I added my two usual cardstock shims. That's what I add when I have difficulties foiling and it usually does the trick. Because if you are not foiling on specialty cardstock, you will typically run into foiling issues. And ta-da, that worked much better. Not 100% perfect, but close enough and good enough for me. Okay, this is looking to be a very long video. I hope you guys don't mind. I adhered my foiled panels to A2 top folding card bases. I also die cut the word hello from my wonderful script sentiments set. I cut it from the same white glossy cardstock that I used for the white flower outlines. And I also cut one layer from white pop-up foam die cutting sheets from Spellbinders and I adhere the two die cuts together to create dimension. Next, I adhere the hello above the foil sentiment closer to the right hand side of the card. I did the opposite side on the peach card. And next, I pulled out my thin foam adhesive squares. Spellbinders now sells these and they have mixed packs. So you have large squares and small squares in one pack, which is very convenient. And I use those to add dimension to my flower die cuts. You guys know me. I love to add dimension to my cards and I always use loads of foam adhesive squares. Now, I typically go with the usual thickness, you know, the I would call them the thick foam adhesive squares. But this time I kind of wanted my flowers not that high up above the background. By the way, on the topic of foam adhesive squares and foam tape and dimension, you know, if you're making a card and you know you will be mailing that card, especially, you know, if you are making a card for a specific friend who lives far away, it is best to skip the foam adhesive or dial back because using too much foam adhesive will make your card very dimensional and that might require you to use a padded envelope and spend more on postage. But if you know that you will hand deliver your card, perhaps to a friend who lives, you know, in your city, or if you are sending your card in a package, you know, in a box with some other goodies, go ahead and use as much foam adhesive as your heart desires because it is fun. Okay, because I wanted to create a floral background, you know, a floral pattern, I knew I would need to cut some of my anemone clusters apart. 
This is the easiest way to fill the entire background. Don't position one cluster in the center and then try to build or fill the space around it. No, you position one cluster on one side of your card, trim it, and then position another cluster on another side of the card and trim it too. And then use whatever is left to fill the background gaps. It is also easier to cut the cluster apart before you adhere it to your background. And it is easier for me, it is easier to cut it using scissors, a good pair of sharp, long bladed scissors. I did try to use my paper trimmer as I usually do use my paper trimmer and it didn't work too well. It jammed my die cut, so I had to fuss a little bit to save it. Best to use the sharpest tool that you have and the, the tool that you have most confidence in. If you are 100% confident in your paper trimmer, use it. But if you have doubts, use your scissors as this way you'll have a lot more control when cutting your die cuts. For me, it helps to tape the die cut onto the background using my yellow tape. This way, I'm not just holding the die cut with my fingers. There's also tape holding it down and the cut I make ends up cleaner and better and well, it ends up straight, you know, and we all want straight cuts on our cards. Okay, uh, by cutting your clusters into parts, you also might end up with some leftovers that could be used on the inside of the card. I rarely decorate the inside of my cards. That's why I actually designed the sentiment set with the inside card sentiments. But honestly, I just end up using those sentiments on the outside of my cards. So if you have any leftover floral die cuts, you can easily add them to the inside of your card and continue the design to the inside. I think that looks stunning and you're also not wasting anything. I had leftovers from both of my cards, so I added these leftover die cuts to the inside. I finished my cards by adding oyster white fashion dots I scattered them around the background, I added some dots onto the flowers and then some dots onto the background and that helped fill the blank space and also helped add elegance and movement to my cards. I did use glue, the Barely Art glue, to adhere the dots in place. Now the dots are self-adhesive, but I think it's better to be safe than sorry. It doesn't take long to add a dot of glue. And this way, the dots will stay in place permanently. Dots adhere really well to nice and smooth cardstock. For example, like that Simon Says DM glossy cardstock. But if your cardstock has a little bit of texture, the adhesive dots will not adhere as well. That's what I'm trying to say. So that finishes my colored cardstock cards featuring the Anemone Blooms collection. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.